Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today the church celebrates the feast of St. Anthony Zacharia. It comes to us from the 1500s, the founder of a number of religious communities and lay associations. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that in the spirit of the Apostle Paul, we may pursue the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, for having learned it, St. Anthony Zacharia constantly preached your saving work in the church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob departed from Beersheba and proceeded toward Haran. When he came upon a certain shrine, as the sun had already set, he stopped there for the night. Taking one of the stones at the shrine, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep at that spot. Then he had a dream. A stairway rested on the ground with its top reaching to the heavens, and God's messengers were going up and down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him and saying, I, the Lord, am the God of your forefather Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you are lying, I will give to you and your descendants. These shall be as plentiful as the dust of the earth, and through them you shall spread out east and west, north and south. In you and your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. Know that I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will never leave you until I have done what I promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he exclaimed, Truly, the Lord is in this spot, although I did not know it. In solemn wonder, he cried out, How awesome is this shrine! This is nothing else but an abode of God, and that is the gateway to heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head, set it up as a memorial stone, and poured oil on top of it. He called the site Bethel, whereas the former name of the town had been Luz. Jacob then made this vow, if God remains with me to protect me on this journey I am making and to give me enough bread to eat and clothing to wear, and I come back safe to my father's house, the Lord shall be my God. This stone that I have set up as a memorial stone shall be God's abode. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, my God, I place my trust. In you, my God, I place my trust. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. In you, my God, I place my trust. For he will rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroying pestilence. With his pinions he will cover you, and under his wings you shall take refuge. In you, my God, I place my trust. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. In, in you, you, my God, God I, I place my, my trust. trust. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. 
A woman suffering hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the tassel on his cloak. She said to herself, if only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house she saw he, and saw that the flute players in the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, she, when the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and the little girl arose. And news of this spread throughout all that land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So Father Mike just returned from a retreat. Priests are asked, canon law says that we should all take a retreat at least once a year, and I encourage it for anybody, whether it's, uh, you know, a weekend, some can only get away maybe a day of recollection, and some can do perhaps a more extensive, the famous Ignatian 30-day retreat. Um, but but it, some people do their retreats in different ways. Uh, some will go and it's a directed one where there are talks at certain times over the course of the day with times in between to pray. Others, priests I know, just take a stack of books that they want to read, that they've been meaning to read, and they'll use that and they'll kind of do their retreat on their own. Wherever it is or however it happens, it's about going and looking for God and finding the Lord and the commotion in our lives. I, I always laugh. I listen to, a, a subscribe to a podcast of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. This particular one is basically just the daily homily from their parish that they run in, I think, Yonkers. And so in the midst of this, sometimes as they're recording, you will hear fire trucks go by, you will hear horns honking, you will hear all kinds of commotion of the city. You realize, like, they can find God in the midst of the city. There's others who maybe have a cabin in the woods, or they go out to parks or trails, or, you know, want to get someplace secluded to look for God. And the idea is God can be found anywhere. In our readings today, it's, it's all the different sort of times and places and things. We get today the grandson of Abraham, Jacob, is, has found God in the midst of this field where he stops for a rest, the site of an old shrine. And there this vision comes to him in the dream. And so in the midst of that silence, he knows this place is not so silent. And he's able to see now with the eyes of God this stairway to heaven, long before Led Zeppelin wrote it. You know, this idea of ascending angels, ascending and descending, a conduit, a pathway, right, from earth to heaven. And so he says this indeed is a holy place. So here in the midst of nowhere, we get today in the gospel, the crowd, right? The crowd, we get, we get us, like we did, this was our gospel two weekends ago, the story within the story. This is Matthew's version compared to Mark's version. This one's a very short version of the story. An official comes up. It's only in the other gospels we know. This is the head of the synagogue. The elected head of the synagogue comes, Jairus, comes to Jesus. And we can imagine him dressed in this opulent finery, kneeling, we hear, before Jesus, subservience faith and trust. My daughter has died, but you can heal her. And so in the midst of even a small crowd now, this man seeks God. And then we hear the story within the story. It's meant to show us that it takes some time to walk to where this official's house is. And in the midst of it, we get the story of the woman with the hemorrhage. She's in a crowd and she goes and searches and can see God finds God. And for her, it's, you know, I mean, if you think about uh, Jairus' daughter is healed with a touch in the woman with the hemorrhage, she touches him. Now it's the touch of a hand, touch of skin for Jairus' daughter. Here it's, his, even his clothing has been so close to him for so long, even his clothing has power. Now, if Jesus' clothing was somewhere else and he, you know, I don't know, taking a bath or something, it's not that the clothes are the magic. You know, that's superstition, right? But it's the idea of being so close to the Lord that even in proximity to it while he's wearing it, that she, she feels this. Right? We hear today in the, in the responsorial psalm, Psalm 91, In you, O Lord, I place my trust. So on a day like this, we, we ask God to help us to trust that we can find it. Sometimes we think, well, you know, I, I, I have to spend some time with the Lord. I've got to get myself to church, or I have to get myself on a retreat, or I'm going to make some time on vacation. And so we put off kind of the, the conversation with God, the communion with God for some other time when we think it'll be easier when at least it could bring us comfort that God is always there, that we can always, in the midst of the noise of our world and the busyness of our lives, just take a step back, 
a little bit of quiet in our own interior recollection and pray. Pray in the car, you know. Pray wherever, have that moment. And to always know that wherever we are, you know, it's not too loud for God to hear us. The Lord can always hear. We know that within the sacraments, God present, we call down the Holy Spirit upon the bread and wine, the words of Jesus through the priest, instituting, re-presenting, giving us again. Jesus promises every time the priest does that, he will come down. Not when he feels like it, not on a good day, not on a busy day, you know, like every time that Jesus will be present. When we go to the confession, that the priest, that Jesus speaks through that priest and gives us those words of absolution. Today we reflect on this Anthony Zachariah, um, medical doctor by training, worked in hospitals, brought Christ in his healing to, to others, but still discerned even after that a vocation to the priesthood. Um, we have a priest in our diocese who was a medical doctor, a pediatrician before he became a priest. I was in school with a guy from Lincoln, Nebraska, who uh, was a medical doctor, saw this. So it does happen in life. Um, we had a guy fall on ice in the parking lot, hit his head, kind of bloody nose, brought him inside. We said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I said, wait, we have a guy now who's a doctor. I call him. I said, this guy hit his head. Come look at him. He said, I'm a urologist. Just so you know. Well, you went to medical school. You can do something. You got to know more than we do, right? So we reflect on, on uh, uh, you know, we reflect on finding God in all the, un, uh, you know, the unlikely places that God can work those miracles, as he did. Founded, founded a, a religious order for for men, uh, the clerics of St. Paul, they're known as the Barnabites of, for St. Barnabas, for the friend of St. Paul's, uh, a religious association of nuns, uh, and also an association for married couples to draw from each other to help each other grow in holiness. So, you know, the, he was one of the great joys of the Reformation movement, of the Counter-Reformation movement, that, you know, this great dark time in the church when Martin Luther and all break, um, that they, they, it caused these heroes, these people to come forward that God inspired to bring people back to holiness, to bring them maybe in the parts where the Reformation might have noticed where our, you know, we had gone astray, but okay, now God brings the healing. Um, so we ask him today to pray for us and help us in our journey that we may always seek to find God and, and to be aware that we always can wherever we are. Please stand. With one voice, let us offer prayers to our merciful Father for the needs of our church and our world. For the church, may she be filled with spiritual gifts and graces, we pray to the Lord. For elected leaders, may Christ guide their hearts and minds in working to protect the dignity and right to life of all, we pray to the Lord. For those who have been physically, financially, or otherwise affected by the pandemic, may the Lord fill them with his compassionate presence, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Holy Spirit, may the Holy Spirit stir in us an aversion to sin and a heart for the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they soon see the glory of the Lord and be met with great rejoicing, we pray to the Lord. And for our country for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers which we bring to you with absolute faith in your goodness. Grant this Grant us all that we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Anthony, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Anthony Zachariah, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and James our Bishop and all the clergy. For also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Mercy in us all we pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints in whose constant, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, through marriage, O heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property. to receive Holy Communion here. We offer our spiritual communion for those watching online. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed Anthony Zechariah, 
that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Reminder that today the parish office is closed. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.